ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the startup stage, brought to you by the Consumer Technology Association. And now, please welcome Executive Managing Director at Extreme Tech Challenge and Head of Ecosystem at Walden Catalyst Ventures, Victoria Slivkoff. Hi, hello, welcome, and it's great to be back at CES on behalf of Extreme Tech Challenge. Um, feeling the energy of the room, seeing so many familiar faces in the audience, um, but also new folks that we like to meet. So uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I want to give a little bit about Extreme Tech Challenge for those of you who haven't heard uh, about us. We are the world's largest startup ecosystem and innovation ecosystem with um, active participation from over 10,000 um, startup founders every year across over 120 countries. So we're truly this uh, amalgamation of everybody that's participating in the innovation economy. Um, a little bit about uh, our mission. As a uh, US uh, nonprofit, we're all about finding amazing entrepreneurs that are building innovations to improve human and planetary health and we give them what we call the rocket fuel to help them scale, which are four things. First is global visibility, pinning them on really big stages such as this. Second is access to uh, corporate strategic partnerships. Third, access to potential uh, venture investments from our community of hundreds of VCs that are part of our, uh, our ecosystem. And then fourth is mentorship and networking. Um, coming to events like this and coming to other events that they're able to um, make uh, relationships and friendships that could potentially help them far into the future. Um, we were founded 10 years ago with our humble beginnings on Sir Richard Branson's Necker Island. And fast forward to today, and was founded by two legendary Silicon Valley investors, Young Sung and Bill Tai. Young most recently served as Samsung's corporate president and chief strategy officer. And um, Bill is uh, very, very legendary. He's one of the most successful early stage investors of our times. With 26 of his early stage investments have IPO. Um, so truly, truly amazing record. And uh, Young, after he um, uh, retired from Samsung, he still serves as an advisor to Samsung, but um, he founded a deep tech venture firm called Walden Catalyst Ventures, uh, focused on deep tech, uh, AI and data, uh, which I also uh, work on the team as well. So uh, Extreme Tech Challenge, what's really unique about us is that we are this broad buffet. We're a broad marketplace where we cover every tech vertical under the sun and across different funding stages. So we uh, are on the stages of over 20 large tech conferences all over the world, from CES to TechCrunch Disrupt, uh, to Slush, to Tech Barbecue, I mean over 20 of them, plus our own conferences and events as well across uh, um, all six continents. Well, with except for Antarctica. Um, so it's, it's really, really great. And what makes us truly unique is that we, um, Extreme Tech Challenge, we're at the nexus of this global community working to, for, uh, to advance innovation. So that includes founders, of course. That includes VCs, corporate innovation executives, incubator accelerators, and other in innovation ecosystem builders. We also work with philanthropists, uh, people that want to see their dollars into an impact um, and driving uh, companies that are truly changing the world. And we also have uh, partnerships with uh, NGOs and IGOs, such as United Nations, because they do look for, uh, will look towards uh, organizations like us that can help them source innovation and, and also elevate the startup companies that are in the UN uh, portfolio. Uh, so that's a little bit about us, and we're here today because uh, the topic is, is deep tech for climate tech innovation. We've also expanded our scope of work to uh, leverage the network and the learnings that we've had by you know, working and servicing um, corporates and VCs over the past 10 years. So now that we also build innovation programs for uh, corporates as well. So I was really excited to kick off CES. Uh, for those of you who were at the Samsung press conference on day one, 
Uh, on that big stage, we were featured as Samsung's partner for their circularity and climate uh, tech startup program. So I, I think we're, it's just truly, we're truly honored and truly humble um, to be working with wonderful, wonderful, great corporations that have the vision to drive innovation forward and uh, to help them enable that. Uh, so, and we're so, so happy. One of the big uh, partnerships that we have uh, formed last year uh, was with Cadence Foundation of Cadence Design Systems. And um, hence, that brought us over today um, in bubbling up uh, the top companies from the deep tech for climate tech uh, innovation startup challenge. So I, I really think what makes this truly unique and the magic lies within this amazing community of Extreme Tech Challenge of hundreds and if not now over thousands of VCs and corporate partners um, and you all here, thank you for joining the stage and, and giving our founders the limelight that deserve. Uh, so enjoy a really good show, but here I want to invite um, our partner and uh, my uh, sponsor today, uh, Nicole Johnson, who is the president of the Cadence Foundation of Cadence Design Systems, to say uh, a little bit about our partnership, her goals, objectives, and, and how you all can uh, perhaps take part. So thank you so much, and let's welcome Nicole. Thank you, Victoria. Um, so thank you, everyone, for being here today. It's been um, just incredibly inspiring to be here at CES this week. Are we good? Maybe? Well, it has been really inspiring to be at CES this week, hasn't it? Um, great. So uh, it has been really inspiring to be here to see all of the incredible technology that's being developed, all of the new tools, all of the um, really useful, inspiring, amazing technology that, you know, I think back to even 10 years ago and um, what didn't exist and what can exist today is, is just uh, overwhelming. So um, that being said, um, the, the startup innovators that you're going to hear from today are working on um, what I consider to be the greatest issue of our time, and that's the issue of climate change. So um, when you take really smart people and you have them innovating, and you have them innovating for good, that's magic. Um, so really, really deeply grateful to the startup leaders that you're gonna hear from today um, for their commitment to addressing this issue and making an impact on our planet and on our lives and on our future. Um, I also wanna say we are deeply grateful to the Extreme Tech Challenge team. We, as a philanthropic foundation, struggle to figure out how to support innovators who are working on this. Um, Extreme Tech Challenge is that really uh, innovative bridge in and of itself in bringing us together. So uh, they're, they're the, really the, the meat behind all of this and we are incredibly grateful to them for their hard work, getting the innovators together, bringing this ecosystem together. Um, thank you to XTC. Um, so the startups that you're going to hear from, like I said, they are working on um, our world's greatest issues. Um, they're working in the air, they're working on the water, they're working um, in innovative technologies to make an impact on climate change, and we are deeply grateful to them. So thank you, and I think a video is coming now. Thank you, Nicole, and don't go anywhere. I think just to give you a sense of where we've been and how we've got here and what our community is like, here's a quick video Extreme marking. Extreme Tech Challenge, as you know, that I found uh, with Bill Tai 11 years ago. This is all about communicating successful entrepreneurs that are making impact. I am extraordinarily impressed with this program. The Extreme Tech Challenge is an outstanding program for entrepreneurs around the world, and I was incredibly impressed with the energy and passion and overall quality of the companies and entrepreneurs I had a chance to meet. So if you're a founder of a startup, you want to make a real impact, and you want to go global, then the best platform you can choose is Extreme Tech Challenge. 
Young and Bill's vision of catalyzing the startup community is truly being realized through the XTC competition. One of the things that we clearly saw in our community was a group of entrepreneurs, energetic, passionate, you know, people that could handle a lot of variability and defeat every day and just keep going. Awesome. Great. Um, is this on? Um, so I also want to thank our judges. Um, our judges work tirelessly, um, and it was tough to uh, whittle away anybody from this stage because we had some amazing um, entrepreneurs who applied. So deeply grateful to uh, our judges here who gave their time and thought partnership to, um, to the judging of this contest. So thank you to our judges. And our evaluator, evaluation committee. So we have over 500 VCs now part of our evaluation committee. If all of your investors in the audience, please uh, scan, get in touch, and we'd love you to have you join uh, where you can judge um, 20 over 30 of our competitions events every year. Uh, so deeply grateful for everybody's times and expertise uh, for being involved in uh, the judging process so the truly, truly deserving startups uh, get blah, blah, blah to the top. So with that, let's get the startup competition going. Uh, I'd like to announce the first presenter. Uh, we have a Werner uh, from Seven Analytics. <laughs> So, uh, good evening. Seven Analytics has raised us an innovative force within the climate tech sector with clients benefiting from our solutions all around the world. From our Norwegian roots, we have a diverse blend of expertise in earth science, data analytics, and software development to tackling the pressing climate issues. Tripling of urbanization last decades had disrupted water absorption from the natural landscapes, hence escalated the flood risk. Additionally, climate crisis is re re rewriting their norms, with once-in-a-century flood becoming an annual event. These megatrends mega are on collusion course. Not, no res resilience is no longer optional, it's mandatory. In the US, flood damages have tripled from the first to second decade this century, and towards 2030, damages are expected to triple once again. In Europe, only a quarter of flood damages are insured. Hence, the future will be costly and innovation is needed. Devastation wrought by floods extend beyond the visual damage. It challenged the very fabric of financial security when insurance companies withdraw from the market and the coverage wanes. Seven Analytics delivered flood risk intelligence to insurance, allowing them to stay in the market regardless of geographical location or asset value. InsureFlood monitors 250 parameters related to the physical environment of each property, providing detailed insight to into flash flow trajectories on which insurers can price their products with precision. The model's validity stems from a machine learning algorithm trained on data from millions of buildings, redefined by proprietary geodetic, geospatial data sets along with historical flood claims. InsureFlood serves as a threefold force, enhancing risk understanding, ensuring pricing precision, and fostering proactive prevention. So, we are raising $5 million this uh, spring. So if you want to join the, our uh, adventure in US and other countries for scaling, I'm uh, available for talk. Thank you so much. And um, at the end of the pitch competition, if you go to Extreme Tech Challenge, you'll find all the finalists and uh, listed in, uh, on our website. So the next presenter comes from Barrow Green. Please welcome Dan. Hello. 
Hello, hello. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, I'm Dan Levick, the engineering director at Barrow Green, where we are building elastocaloric solutions for a warming planet. Now, before I tell you what the heck elastocaloric means, let's talk about our warming planet and the air conditioners we use to stay cool. Modern air conditioners leak powerful greenhouse gases. So while they might keep your living room nice and cool, they're actually warming up our planet. For this reason, governments around the world, including the US, um, are phasing out this technology over the next 10 years. So this has created a massive opportunity for technologies that can meet the upcoming regulations. Ours can. And we plan to double the efficiency of current air conditioning technology. So imagine you could cool two living rooms for the price of one, uh, BOGO. Um, by the way, elastocaloric means um, we're moving heat, so that's the caloric part, by stretching a special material, that's the elasto part. Uh, our patented approach actually bends the material so we can make smaller, lighter, and cheaper devices. We plan to launch our uh, personal cooling product at the end of next year, and we're looking for pre-seed funding to help us get there. Um, imagine you're a construction worker working on a skyscraper 20 stories up in 120 degree Las Vegas summer heat, we're gonna keep you cool, and that's gonna keep you safe, and that's gonna help you be more productive. Uh, from there, we're gonna move into vehicle air conditioning uh, and residential, like, window size uh, AC units. We've got a great team, including the original inventors of the technology. Uh, we received government funding for a prototype last year, and we've partnered with Ames National Lab to apply for additional government funding. We're about to launch a NASA-funded program with the University of Illinois, so we've convinced a lot of smart people to work with us and a few smart people to fund us so far. So please uh, join us on our journey. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dan from Barrow Green. A round of applause for Dan again. Our next presenter comes from BioEasel. Welcome, and please put your hands together for Samuel. Hi, I'm Samuel, co-founder and CEO of Bayesol. Here's a question. What are the two biggest challenges that the world is facing right now? Energy crisis and climate impact. One of the biggest growth opportunities in the market lies on the storage and management of energy. That is why we offer a revolutionary battery solution with an intelligent system. We can store energy from any renewable sources. We develop an out-of-balance cell system that enables, in case if a cell has an issue, our battery solution continues working. We offer a 25-year lifetime battery. We supply the red current electricity at 148 volts. Our solution work, works without any interruptions. To speed up our innovation strategy, we open an R&D office in Grenoble, France. Do you know that the world needs 970 gigawatts of storage to achieve net zero? And today, there is only 28 gigawatts installed. We are talking about a global market value of more than 200 billion US dollars. We are focusing on a unique business model to cover the gap that other players don't meet, small and medium businesses. This is an example of how our solution reduces energy costs and CO2 emissions. We are proven B2B energy solution, and we start operations in May 2021. Last year, we end up with three million US dollar in revenue and with a pipeline of 140 million US dollar. And the most important thing is we have been profitable since year one. We have been trusted by relevant investors and sign up contract alliances We recognize corporates. To make this happen, we gathered a world-class team to build a world-leading storage company. Let's impact together. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel, for BioEasel. The next presenter comes from Dynamic Air Cooling. Twenty-seven percent of global emissions by 2050 will be caused by air conditioning and refrigeration. By mid-century, people worldwide will use more energy for cooling than for heating. Also, 
AC and refrigeration units are made with toxic freon gases. When they leak into the atmosphere, they trap 4,000 times more heat than CO2 does. At the same time, the world requires more refrigeration. As much as a third of all food is lost or wasted between the harvest and the home. In New York State alone, food makes up to 18% of all waste, about 3.9 million tons. Food losses represent a waste of resources such as land, water, energy. This increases the greenhouse gas emissions and reduces the profits across the entire supply chain. We have developed and patented DAC, a novel dynamic air cooling technology. It does not need toxic HFCs and uses 30% less energy than the state of the art cooling technologies. Dynamic air cooling provides more consistent refrigeration and preservation of food products and helps to increase food production, as well as reduce energy costs. Cutting down 1% of food waste through better and more accessible storage solutions means an additional 39,000 tons of food for New Yorkers. At the current growth rate, an additional 1 billion AC units will be installed globally in the next 10 years. Combined with refrigerators, the global cooling unit stock could reach 6 billion units by 2028, meaning a 80 billion euro market. Our team of 8 employees with experience in hardware development, product management and supply chain sustainability from companies like Coca-Cola, Kraft, Apple and Motorola. We need your help to finally make cooling very cool. Thank you to the team from Dynamic Air Cooling. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Our next presenter comes from Earthen. Karthik, please take the stage. Welcome, Karthik. <laughs> All right, let's give him a warm welcome. Since the dawn of time, energy has been the catalyst for innovation and growth globally. But for the first time in history, energy is the bottleneck. And that's due to two fundamental reasons. Number one, with increasing temperatures, the grid is increasingly becoming vulnerable. And number two, renewables are intermittent. Now, how do we stop this, right? How do we depend on solar when the sun isn't always shining? And how do we depend on wind when the wind isn't always blowing? You need energy storage. You need energy storage to capture the excess renewable energy that's being generated by solar and wind today, store it, and dispatch it during the night or at times in which the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't always blowing. My name is Karthi. I'm one of the founders here at Earthen, where we're doing exactly just that. Now, the problem of energy storage is clear in that you need... The problem of energy storage is clear in that you need something to store the excess solar and wind to run you energy, renewable energy 24-7. However, when we talk to customers, namely utility providers, all of them state needing a flexible and future-proof energy storage solution, something that can capture the entire renewable energy capacity today and grow with them for life. And that solution doesn't exist. Additionally, the current energy storage solutions that do exist are very expensive, they're hard to scale, the majority of the technologies are batteries, so they suffer from heat and cyclic based degradation, and not to mention they explode left and right. Which is why we've created a novel thermomechanical energy storage solution that uses carbon dioxide to store energy. Now our solution is uniquely flexible and future proof in that we can store anywhere from four to over a hundred hours, allowing you to store energy through the night and for days at a time. This is projected to be the lowest cost solution. It's highly scalable. From the outside, this is a looks like a battery. It's a 40-foot shipping container, and it can be plug and play anywhere. But the most important part is we use CO2 in a, working, in a closed loop as a working fluid. As a result, we can strategically work with oil and gas to decarbonize not only their energy storage, but we can also decarbonize all of these carbon capture, utilization, and sequestration hubs that are emerging all over the USA and in the world. As a result, we can convert CO2 pipelines to be energy storage assets. Specifically, one mile of these pipelines can generate and store one gigawatt of energy. But at the heart of our technology, what we've done is created a new way to convert heat to electricity. As a result, this technology will be applied to nuclear, geothermal, and energy storage. Now, from an impact, it's pretty clear. Not only are we enabling renewable energy 24-7, we're also sequestering CO2. And we do that by using the CO2 in a closed loop. 
So by 2050, when we store 100 million megawatt hours, we'll also be permanently sequestering 2.7 gigatons of energy. Where we're at is we finish our prototype right now. We're about to raise a $25 million Series A, in which we have almost all of it soft committed. Uh, we recently got funded by the Department of Energy through two first-of-a-kind funding mechanisms. And these funding mechanisms were not something we applied for. They heard about us and funded us directly. And we have three projects lined up, uh, one with Orsted and two with major Fortune 500 companies. I'm one of the founders, and at the end of the day, we're a team of lean, mean, hungry fighting machines that will not stop until we fight and win against climate change. Thanks. Thank you, Carthy. That was uh, really, really terrific from Earthen. And our next presenter comes from EH Group. Please put your hands together for Christopher. Hi, Chris Brandon, co-founder of EH Group, based in Switzerland. Since 2018, we have been working on our unique hydrogen fuel cell technology. Why? Because we want to decarbonize aviation, heavy-duty mobility, marine mining, etc., and long-duration energy storage where batteries alone are insufficient. But fuel cells are too complicated, too costly. So we have redesigned them to a microstructure level, giving us unparalleled design flexibility and higher performance. In fact, our stacks are half the size, two thirds of the weight with greater efficiencies at system level. In addition, in addition is designed for manufacturing, which our unique production process we've been working on for the last four years, means we're able not just to scale up, but to drive down the cost of fuel cells even at relatively low volumes. We've been deploying them across a wide range of stationary applications from microgrids to data center backups, etc. And mobility too, starting from the smaller forklifts like commercial vehicles all the way to large mining trucks and into aviation. The market is expanding rapidly. The Inflation Reduction Act and other policies around the world is leading to very significant support. And we see the, the near-term opportunities in large stationary power as well as maritime in particular. We have an amazing team of 25 engineers across all types of uh, backgrounds, electrical, mechanical, electrochemists. Along the way, we've brought on some great investors too. We've raised about nearly 20 million US dollars, 17 million Swiss, and currently raising a further 10 to 14 million Swiss uh, in a Series A. But it's a big challenge. We need to decarbonize and we need to move fast. So we're looking for investors and partners, clients who believe in and share our vision and want to join us on this fabulous journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Team EH. And the next startup comes from us remote, CO2. Hi, my name is Ruben Brons. I'm the CEO and co-founder of CO2. Our company is working on ocean-powered, gigaton-scalable carbon removal. In order for our planet to reach net zero by 2050, we need to reduce emissions, but that is not enough. After decarbonizing all industries, we will still need to remove 10 gigatons, often referred to as negative emissions. That is where our CO2 comes into play. But why do you use the ocean? The key concept here is scale. The ocean already absorbs a third of all emissions. Most importantly, carbon is 150 times more concentrated than the air, making CO2 capture easier and more cost efficient. Our solution is direct ocean capture and needs only renewable electricity and seawater as inputs. Our patented process consists of applying an electrical current to seawater, creating the conditions to strip out the CO2. Then the decarbonized water is returned to the ocean, where it absorbs an equivalent amount of CO2 from the air. The CO2 is permanently sequestered or utilized into products to, to decarbonize industries. McKinsey estimates that the voluntary carbon market will grow massively, reaching our 2050 10 gigaton goal, selling carbon credits at $100 a ton would mean a $1 trillion market. We plan to reach the megaton scale around 2030 by reducing our costs as we advance our technology. Our aim is to remove one gigaton of CO2 from the atmosphere every year by 2035. And this is what our prototype looks like today. And we are leveraging it to design our pilot plant to be constructed next year. We've successfully removed our first batch of CO2 and stored it into concrete with our partner Pebble. We are building our pilot plant with a yearly removal capacity of 250 tons 
and we generated our first revenue by selling 140 carbon removal credits to Klarna and World Foundation. Together with our partners, we believe we can reach gigaton scale carbon removal. Our team brings a unique blend of technical and business expertise. Thank you for your time, and we're looking forward to working with you. Are you ready to ride this wave with us? Terrific, thank you to the team at CO2. And our final presenter today comes from Water Warriors. Life cannot exist without water. We need it to survive. At Water Warriors, we believe that water is the world's most valuable resource. And we protect it by removing phosphorus from water. Because when there's excess phosphorus in water, toxic algae blooms can occur. The algae blooms make our drinking water unsafe. They're harmful to the environment as well as human health. The EPA called algae blooms one of the most costly and widespread environmental problems. So we developed Poseidon pellets through a cooperative research and development agreement with the US EPA. These pellets absorb phosphorus from water upon contact. They're chemical free and environmentally friendly, the way we believe how water should be treated. And they're versatile, so they're a great fit across multiple markets. Anywhere from agriculture runoff on up to wastewater treatment, Poseidon pellets are a viable option. And here's a quick example of our pellets packaged in boom socks. In normal flows, we saw two minutes of contact time and produced a reduction of 50% of phosphorus. And our process is simple. We know the capacity through multiple isotherm tests with the US EPA. And once we determine the phosphorus loading, we can make a recommendation on the volume of pellets required to reach the water quality goal all over the world, because this is a global issue. And we're already in a lot of the areas where you see high phosphorus pollution. We're ready to make an impact with uh, enough inventory to produce a million pounds of pellets and absorption capacity to capture over 60,000 pounds of phosphorus. And one more thing, when the pellets reach nutrient capacity, they can be reused as a soil amendment, returning the phosphorus back to the land. And that's our mission to capture excess phosphorus where it's having a negative impact and then reuse it as a soil amendment for a positive impact. For more information, visit us at waterwarriorsinc.com. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Water Warriors. I, I, I should say that in addition to thanking our judges and mentors, evaluators, um, I want to thank all the founders who entered this competition. You know, it's no small fee. And huge congratulations to the top eight companies that made it to this final stage. Um, I, should, I should say how, how, how special that is. Consider that out of the extreme tech challenge community, um, Zoom and, and Canva actually came out of this community. Um, the story is our founders, Young and, and Bill, were the first two angel checks into Zoom and invested in Eric Yuan when he was not able to raise any outside institutional funding. Um, so, and then, and then ultimately over the years, that grew to be a huge company. Um, so I really think it's, first of all, finding high potential companies but also it's the power of the community, the people that are involved, the VCs, domain ex experts, then help groom and support um, to, to, to enable that company to be successful. So I think it's really, really special that you all get the opportunity here today because everybody got the same exposure on this stage. So with that, I'd like to invite Nicole uh, Johnson, president of Cadence Foundation, up here once again to join me and do us the honor of announcing the winner of this competition. Nicole. Thank you again, Victoria. Um, so you've heard from these amazing entrepreneurs and innovators. Thank you to everyone who came up, who is here and participating. It was a very tough decision uh, by our judges, but we are very excited to announce the winner. Um, can Carthy from Earth N come up? <laughs> yeah, congratulations and a round of applause for Carthy. From Earth In. I, 
I also really want to just invite all the finalists who pitched today to join us on stage for a group photo. Um, you are so deserving of the spotlight, and we're just super excited about what you're working on. So, so come on in, and maybe, yeah, we'll balance it out. Huh? Are we in dead center, Giles? We're good. Thank you so much. Put your hands together. But I also want to say, can we pull up our QR code of Extreme Tech Challenge, scan it, visit our website, subscribe to our newsletter, because we do events like this all over the world. Um, and, and, and we would love to involve you um, to be judges, mentors, if you're an investor, um, or if you're a startup here, we'd love to see you apply and hopefully put you on the stage of our future events. Uh, thank you so much. Our, uh, we're next going to be um, in San Francisco, so more to come. Thank you so much, and have a rest, great rest of your seat. Yes. <laughs>